Hello, my name is Rachel Munyai and I am one of the nurse advisors at Target Ovarian Cancer. In this session, I want to use my previous experience as a research nurse to give you some insight into what clinical trials are all about. So the session will go like this. First of all, we will consider clinical research in general before moving on to look specifically at clinical trials. I will attempt to answer some of the most commonly asked questions about clinical trials, and we'll finish with some information about how you can find out more. So first of all, I wanted to talk to you about clinical research. Clinical research is an umbrella term that covers all the ways in which scientists and healthcare professionals work together to develop not only new treatments, but also new knowledge for better health and care. Clinical research falls into two major types. The first type of clinical research includes studies that help us to better understand health and specific conditions. For example, researchers might collect health information that helps them to understand how a condition develops and progresses over time. It could involve a study of a person's quality of life or well-being whilst living with a disease. It's important to mention these types of studies because you may be asked, or might even already have been asked, to participate in this type of research during your ovarian cancer treatment and care. More often than not, this type of research will be an observational study. An observational study is where you don't have any different tests or treatments than the standard of care, but research, researchers will ask you about your experiences of care or the impact of that treatment on your quality of life. The second major type of, of um, clinical research is clinical trials. It is clinical trials that we will focus on for the remainder of this session. So all the treatments and tests that are in use today were all tested in clinical trials in the past. Clinical trials are the way in which healthcare profess professionals get the robust evidence that they need to say that treating people with a particular drug or procedure is the most efficient way and the safest way. Researchers use clinical trials to answer certain questions about new drugs, new tests, or new procedures. They want to know, firstly, is it safe? Does it have any expected or unexpected side effects? Does it work better than the currently used standard treatment or test? And what impact does it have on the person's quality of life? So in this slide, I'd like to talk to you about clinical trials and new treatments in more depth and to talk to you about the phases of clinical trials. So let's imagine for a minute that I am a scientist and I have discovered a drug that I believe will help in treating ovarian cancer. This new drug will have to go through an entire process of trials and testing before it can be approved for use in the NHS. This process of testing is, in, is divided into different stages, which are known as the phases of clinical trials. The new drug or procedure has to be shown to be safe and to show promise before it moves on to the next phase of testing. The development of a new drug in the laboratory is, for, is referred to as the preclinical phase. After the preclinical phase comes phase one clinical trials. In phase one trials, the new drug is given to a very small number of healthy volunteers, and the aim is to find out if the drug is safe and to find out the right amount of drug to give. In phase two trials, the drug will be used for the first time in people who have the condition that the drug has been developed for. Usually, everyone in the phase two trial will receive the drug being tested at the same dose. The researchers will look to see if the treatment is working and if any new unexpected side effects are emerging. Phase two trials involve more people than phase one trials. The next phase of testing is a phase three trial. In phase three clinical trials, the new treatment is compared to existing treatments, or if there is no existing treatment to a placebo, which is also sometimes known as a dummy or sugar pill. Often people taking part in phase three clinical trials will be randomized. This means that participants are randomly allocated to a treatment group where they may or may not receive the new treatment. Comparing the groups in this way allows researchers to understand whether the new treatment is safe and if it is more effective than existing treatments. Phase three trials are the type most commonly offered to people with a cancer diagnosis. Phase four trials involve drugs that have already received a license. They help researchers to collect longer term, real world data about the new drug. Clinical trials are available throughout the ovarian cancer treatment pathway. There are clinical trials for people with a new diagnosis as well as for those with a recurrence or for whom standard treatments have stopped working. 
In this slide, I'm going to talk you through some information about a phase three clinical trial that is ongoing at the moment, the ICON-9 trial. The ICON-9 trial is trying to find out whether taking two different drugs as maintenance therapy is better than one maintenance drug on its own. The trial is open to women who have had a response to a second course of chemotherapy for ovarian cancer. This is a phase three trial. It uses two drugs that are known to be safe and effective when used on their own. The researchers want to know though, if they are more effective and just as safe when used in combination. To answer this question, participants in the trial will be randomized into two treatment groups by a computer. One group will receive both drugs while the other will only receive one drug. Neither the participants nor the medical team have any control over who receives what treatment. This is so the researchers can compare how well the participants do on the different types of treatment without any bias. I'm often asked why a person should consider taking part in a clinical trial, and there are many reasons to consider taking part. Many trial participants talk about how they feel much more in control of their own health by taking part in a clinical trial, and that they have an enhanced sense of well-being at the thought of helping people in the future by contributing to medical research. Many people automatically assume that if they take part in a clinical trial, they will get access to a new treatment that is better than any existing ones. This is not always true, however. Often it's difficult to say whether your treatment will be better as part of a trial, especially if the treatment being trialled is very new. It's also possible that you are randomised to receive the standard treatment or the placebo rather than the new treatment being tested. Having said that, during a trial, all participants are carefully monitored. Many studies have shown that patients on clinical trials often receive more attention and monitoring than patients who don't take part in trials. And because of this additional monitoring, they have better outcomes overall. So another question is, will I need extra tests and who will look after me? It is possible that you will need extra tests and appointments if you take part in a trial. You may even need to travel to a different hospital to be part of the trial. This is to monitor your safety and to make sure that the trial treatment is benefiting you. When you are initially approached about taking part in a trial, you will receive both verbal and written information about the potential risks and benefits, as well as about extra tests and hospital visits. You should always make sure to ask any questions you may have before you agree to take part. Your treatment and care will be coordinated by the research team. This may be your usual treating doctor, or it may be a new one who works on that particular trial. You will usually also be allocated a research nurse who will act as your key contact for any concerns about side effects of the treatment or concerns about your general health and well-being during your time on that trial. They will also, they will also coordinate your appointments and any additional tests that you require. So what if the treatment doesn't work or if you change your mind while you're on a clinical trial? Well, it's really important to note that you can change your mind about taking part in a clinical trial at any time without having to give a reason. Whilst taking part in a trial, it will always be your best interests that are in the forefront of the research team's mind. If you change your mind, the trial treatment is not working for you or you have side effects that they aren't able to manage, the research team will talk to you about your options. These options will always include stopping the trial treatment and returning to standard medical care. So that has been a very quick whistle stop tour of clinical trials, and I hope that it's been useful and has sparked an interest to find out more. If you would like to know more about clinical trials, there are lots of ways to do this. Your clinical team will know about the clinical trials that might be an option for you to take part in and will always be pleased if you ask them for more information. You can also take a look at our website, which has an entire area dedicated to information about clinical trials and a searchable database. You can search this database according to your cancer type, treatment stage and your location. You are also very welcome to contact our nurse-led support line to talk through any questions you may have around clinical trials or indeed any matter relating to ovarian cancer in general. The nurse-led support line is run by myself and my colleague Valerie, and we are always pleased to hear from you. Thank you for listening.